as you could see, Dr. Chong and the Santec team deliver an instrument that I think is a very, very good example of what graphical system design can do for you and your applications. You heard in only six months, they were able to get the type of productivity the graphical system design can deliver to you. In addition to that, it was the portability that was really key for getting this type of technology in more places. They were able to take all of the processing power and capabilities of the FPGA-based FlexRio and put it in this small instrument so they could be more portable in more doctor's offices. And then, of course, it was about the measurement itself, the high-precision imagery that they were able to do. We were doing live, real-time OCT scans here on stage that allows them to see things and detect things much sooner. And detection is really the key. You heard Dr. Chong mention how OCT is now being applied also to oncology and cancer research. Cancer is one of the most exciting applications of this technology. In fact, if you look at cancers in general, if you can find this deadly disease earlier, thanks to a, today, a stray blob on an x-ray or an early symptom, your chances of survival rate are up in the 90 percentile. And at that point, treatment is very, very low risk. But if you find it late, um, you have to deal with toxic blasts of radiation and chemotherapy. And at that point, as we all know, the, the prognosis is as miserable as the experience. And that's why we have to have early detection. Today, those battling with this cancer, you can see them with the 10% range. But for every one person you know, there's another 200 people that have yet to be diagnosed. And that's really where this precise imaging technology really comes into play. You want to make those other 200 people more visible sooner so that we can detect this disease and cure it when, this, when the treatments are at lower risk. Now, of all the grand challenges, this isn't the only one where early detection is really, really the key. The next grand challenge I want to explore together with you is to restore and improve urban infrastructure. Now, urban infrastructure or infrastructure is a fundamental combination of all the things that are required for society or a region to survive. And here, prevention is really key. The infrastructure includes all of the things required, including water and sewer systems, our national power and natural gas grids, as well as our road and rail networks. And those physical infrastructure pieces are the ones that are really the most visible to all of us. They're all around us, they're aging, and they're critical to our lifestyle. So to first take a look at the situation of our physical infrastructure right here in Austin. So currently the federal government requires that all bridges be inspected at least every two years. There are approximately 34,000 bridges that TxDOT oversees. We're seeing uh, much more deterioration on our aging infrastructure. The value that we see with the wireless sensor network and the processing capability at the nodes is that we will be able to, number one, eliminate all the cables, and number two, we can process the data at the node and transmit back only the important parts. One of the options that we may be able to make use of is increased monitoring to be able to prioritize and to effectively utilize limited funding that we have available for uh, bridge maintenance. In addition, as we learn more about how the bridge behaves, we can change the algorithms we use to process the data and look at different things. So as we learn more about the behavior, we can focus in on what we want to know. And we believe this is what gives us a tremendous advantage over the systems available today. So now to give us some insight into how graphical system design and NI LabVIEW are helping deal with some of the challenges that Dr. Wood referenced, I'm excited to bring to the stage David Potter and Michael Neal of National Instruments, as well as Jeremiah Faisal of the University of Texas. Welcome, gentlemen. Tell us a little bit about the projects you all are working on. Sure thing. Maintaining our aging civil infrastructure is becoming a bigger and bigger challenge, not only for Texas, of course, but for the entire country, as well as most of the world. And while structural health monitoring systems can be a key part of the solution, the cost and complexity of instrumenting large structures such as bridges with traditional wired systems can be a real barrier to wider adoption. So, so to address this, NI, NI has partnered with the University of Texas Civil Engineering Department and the structural engineering firm of Wisjani Elsner Associates on a research project funded by the NIST Technology Innovation Program to develop economical, low-power wireless systems for long-term health monitoring of our highway bridges. 
So this new system, which is based on LabVIEW and NI's wireless sensor network platform, is currently installed on a bridge right here in Austin. So Jeremiah, why don't you tell us a little bit about the bridge? Okay. If we start here at the Austin Convention Center, the bridge that we're investigating is just a few miles north of here. Uh, it's the intersection at I-35 North to US-290 East. This bridge was constructed in the early 2000s. It features uh, steel box girders that are about 800 feet long. And it's currently classified as a fracture critical bridge. Now, for you in the audience, fracture critical can simply mean that it requires significant labor intensive visual inspections. Now, these visual inspections are very costly and take a lot of time and resources. And so since bridge owners have limited resources to inspect and maintain their bridges, we sought the opportunity to improve this process. And we want to improve this process through the use of data. So we want to be able to capture, put sensors on bridges and capture data that we can then use to estimate fatigue life. And if we know an S, the fatigue life of a bridge, we can then prioritize inspections. For instance, if a bridge is nearing its uh, fatigue life, then we can inspect it more often. Whereas those newer bridges that have just been put in service have lots of fatigue life remaining, we can inspect them less often in the beginning. Now, we chose this particular bridge just due to its location. You know, it's here in Austin, we can easily access it from our lab, the Ferguson Structural Engineering Laboratory, and we can get to it whenever we need to troubleshoot the system or inspect the bridge. Great, so that's our bridge. How about the monitoring system we have on the bridge? So we chose the NI Wireless Sensor Network platform because it's wireless, because it has low power operation, and because it allows us to route data across the bridge and be able to span long distances. Now, the biggest advantage of this system is that it's wireless. Uh, if you can imagine that for this particular bridge, we have to span 800 feet to be able to go from a gauge back to our system. Now, for this particular bridge, we need about this much wire to do that. And it just becomes a costly uh, thing to do, and it's very difficult to install in the field. Now, by going wireless, we eliminate the need to buy all these spools of wire. Now, Shelly. Yes, Jeremiah. Since you have saved us this, we wanted to give this I to you as a gift. Stronger. Now, it's I not only because I didn't want to hold it. <laughs> but Jeremiah, is this for one sensor? Or that's this just is for, for one sensor. One sensor. It. I know you have kids. Curls. Right? They're that's, not this You have yet. some kids, right? I do have some kids. Now, my experience with that wire yes. is that anytime you start unwinding it, it starts getting into knots and everything. Uh -huh. So anytime you need kids to set aside, spend some time. Spend some time. Okay. Yeah, you know, just Keep unwind this. some wire and say, hey, unwind take out all the knots, and then they're good for a couple hours. Hours, got it. <laughs> so, but getting back to the uh, actual system, we, we installed two WSN thermocouple nodes to monitor ambient temperature inside the box. And then we also installed four WSN strain nodes. Now, the strain nodes is what we're most excited about. And the reason for that is because if we can get dynamic data from the bridge, we can then relate the cycles, that, the fatigue cycles that we record from the strain data to the amount of damage that is accumulating in the bridge. And so that's the big advantage to us and being able to use this uh, type of node is what we're looking to do. Right, so strain is critical, of course, and so a key component that NI developed for this project is a new wireless low power strain node which brings full strain gauge signal conditioning as well as hardware timed waveform data acquisition to the low power WSN platform and making it ideal for static and dynamic monitoring applications. Uh, this node also joins uh, new serial I.O. nodes, which are used to interface to RS-232 and RS-45 base sensors and devices. And then we're also very excited to announce a new C-Series WSN gateway that allows you to very easily and cleanly integrate a WSN wireless system directly into a compact RIO system. So uh, we, we heard about the hardware, Jeremiah. How about the software? On the software side, we're capturing dynamic data. So we're capturing data at 50 hertz. And we're just streaming all the raw data across the network currently. And so we stream it from node to node to node back all the way to the gateway, where then we can do some local analysis in the RT environment to just detect events. The events is what we're most interested in. So being able to detect, detect truck events crossing the bridge is what we're looking for. Uh, but was, what was mentioned earlier is that the ability, there's the ability to program on the node. And that's what we're very excited to be doing in the next few weeks. And so instead of streaming all this raw data, we can start doing analysis on the node, whether it just be to detect an event or if we can start doing some 
local processing that does counts fatigue cycles. Remember, the fatigue cycles is what we're most interested in because that's an indication of damage at this bridge. And so if we can count that and just send back the results is what we're looking to do. And all this is gonna be connected to the internet where then we can submit it up into the cloud and be able to access it from there. So you mentioned something about sending the data to the cloud. We're looking at that data. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about this technical data cloud? Sure, Shelley. So NIA is confident that the cloud, with its nearly infinite storage and computing power, is going to play a key role in the science and engineering of the future, especially in applications like this one. So that's why I'm pleased to announce that NIA is hard at work on a new cloud service called Technical Data Cloud that's going to be available this fall. Now, with Technical Data Cloud, LabVIEW programmers, or really programmers using any programming language, will be able to easily and securely send their data to the cloud, store it there, and then let others view it and access it. Now, this is stored up there. How would we see it? With an application or? Well, the nice thing is that uh, because of the way we've built Technical Data Cloud, where all of the data is sent and received through standard web protocols, really any device, so something from a tablet all the way to a smartphone, or any device that can uh, have a web browser on it or create an HTTP command, can receive and access that data. So we've been working with Jeremiah and his team for a few weeks now, and as they've been collecting data, We've uh, worked on a custom web UI that we created with LabVIEW Web UI Builder that lets you download that data and then start sifting through it to find that meaningful information that helps them make better decisions. So I guess that kind of broad enabling web technology, that's good for your clients who are basically bridge owners, not LabVIEW programmers. Right. Is that how you're using Yeah, that? no, it's, it's a very big advantage because we don't, uh, like you're saying, we don't want to, the bridge owners are not going to have LabVIEW installed, but if we can give them a web address that they can go and look at the data, they'll be able to more easily access it. And then bridge inspectors, before they go out to the bridge, can also look at the data before they see it. So uh, why don't we go ahead and start looking at the data, Mike? Uh, we have this web UI that, you've, that we've built, and so we see the last week's worth of data at this bridge. Um, so on a, if we look on a weekly basis, you can see that Saturday and Sunday, we had some loss of data, and it's just because we hadn't installed a energy, a solar panel at the site yet, so we had to replace the batteries. Uh, but you can see that Friday is our largest day, and that's expected because everybody's trying to do things before the weekend. But going on a, from a week basis to a day basis, you can start looking on data hour per hour. You can see that there's a lot of events. So if we just take uh, one period, so this is, I believe, from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, you can see that there's a significant number of events during that period. You know, some of the events are maybe only 30 microstream. Uh, wide, but some are 80 to 90 microstrain. And knowing the cycles plus the amplitude gives us the ability to then estimate the fatigue life. And it's that ability that paves the way to being able to prioritize inspections in the future and go to something that's a more intelligent infrastructure system. Intelligent infrastructure, I think we're all looking forward to that. Thank you guys for sharing. We look forward to hearing about the rest of the project. Right. Thank you, Jeremiah. Thank you. Thank you.